do you do to get clients? Google Ads. Okay. Wedding shows. Yep. Anybody else? Facebook Ads. Yep. I tried wedding wire, I tried the knot, didn't work. Yeah. Wasted like two grand. So the rest of you don't do anything. You just hope and pray that people will find you? Yes. Cool. That you are my ideal clients then. <laughs> um, so as creatives, right, we, we basically, um, we, we struggle when it comes to the business side of things. Because our brain is creative first, and so we want to create. We want to be the people um, that are making things that, that impact people's lives, right? Um, but at the end of the day, 95% of your time needs to be on your business if you actually want to make money. Um, now, if you want to make $30,000, you could probably do that easy without doing any marketing. You don't really need to do anything. But if you want to make a living on this, and you want to have a business that you can sell at the end of the day, or that can just sustain you through your whole life, put your kids through college, and make multiple six figures a year, you've got to do something. You have to do something other than just sit there. And word of mouth is not going to get you through it. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is the process with which I teach people all over the world. So I run ads for people like Album Epica, which is one of the bigger um, album companies in Italy. I run all of their US marketing. So I handle about $20,000 a year in their ad spend alone, uh, just on their ads. I work one-on-one -on -one with, with uh, photographers all over the world as well. And we run their ads for them. We help them set up my marketing system so that they can, in fact, get leads and, and whatnot on demand. And so what I'm going to do is kind of show you some, uh, my normal process, and then after that, I want to show you some things that may open your mind up to some other opportunities, because one of the most, um, or one of the best ways to make money as a videographer today is to do personal branding. And it's not corporate work. It's, it's small businesses that need to actually be able to show people what the experience of working with them is like, right? And so you can get people on retainers for $10,000 a year and give them three videos a year. So every three months, you just do another video for them, and you're making 10 grand guaranteed every year, and people are doing this in the industry right now all over the place. There's a couple people that are teaching the exact system with which to do it, um, and I don't teach that system um, specifically, but I can put, put you in the right direction for it, but I would tell you that um, weddings are not gonna sustain you. Um, because your body's going to break down eventually, right? We're not going to be 70 years old still shooting weddings. Um, and if there are some of you out there, then <laughs> like, tell me what you've done to make sure your back doesn't go out and you know, your shoulders don't just dis be become destroyed, right? So there's got to be an exit plan. And um, when I come to a lot of these seminars and when I speak at like WPPI and some of the other conferences, um, everybody wants to learn lighting. And everybody wants to learn the technical aspect of what, what needs to happen. How do I make good videos, right? Which is a great first stepping stone. But after a while, it's all irrelevant information. And the reason is because most of my peers that make $500,000 a year or more have subpar work. But they're fantastic business people. And the experience of working with those people is also better than anything else that's out there. Okay? So the con we have to think of what the consumer is looking for. At, right? They don't go, oh my God, did you use this type of lighting on that? That was awesome, right? They have no idea what type of lighting you use or if you even use lighting. They just see it and they react to two things. Uh, the blurry background, because they can't do that for now, <laughs> right? And then the emotion, right? What type of emotion is in there? How is it moving me? What is the story that's being told? And that is being repeated over and over and over again. If you look at wedding videographers for the most part, it's they come in, they record the written vows, right? So they both read their letters for the most part. And then they use that as the like sort of voiceover with some music. And then it, almost every single one of them is the same. Like, and that has only come out in the last 15 years, right? Before that, it was people were still using VCR or um, camcorders, right? And handheld, and they really weren't doing much editing. It was just a bunch of raw footage that you got, right? So we made huge leaps and bounds in the last 15, 20 years to be able to actually tell stories and cinematically present uh, these weddings and give them something that they can look at and go, wow, that's really cool. Like, I love that. It actually feels like I'm in a movie, right? But now, everyone's doing that. So how are you going to separate yourself from the crowd? Well, you probably have a whole crap load of videos that you can start showing on Facebook and things like that. And... Uh, that is one of the most impactful things that you can do because when people see a video as opposed to seeing some like 
one single picture, which is what us photographers show, one, one picture hopefully can tell a story, but your videos can tell a complete story, right? And so when you put those out there and you run ads, people see that and they're like, oh, that's really cool. And then if they forget about it, because most millennials these days have no attention span, right? That's who our wedding demographic is, our 25 to 35 year olds. Um, we can actually bring them back with Facebook ads. So if they see our video on, on Facebook and they watch, let's say 75% of it, and then they just leave and they don't do anything. Well, then I can run an ad because they, they watch that video and I can say, hey, you watch this video and we noticed that you didn't click and come to our website. And it's like, wait, what? Like, if, imagine if you saw an ad that was like, hey, you went to my website, you didn't even buy anything. And it's like, what? Right? It catches your attention immediately, right? And then it's like, yeah, by the way, we do, we do wedding photography. We're available. What's your date? You know? So there's a whole process that I'm about to go show you, but I'm going to have to sit down because I don't have a clicker. Okay? <laughs> Oh yeah, you're gonna, we'll get into all that, <laughs> yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so this is just some boring information about me. This is the most awkward part of the speech, just so that you guys believe me. Um, <laughs> um, but basically, I run Luray Photography. That's our photography brand with my wife. My wife actually started it back in 2010. I joined her two years later. Um, in our second year together, we hit six figures. After that, we went up to multiple six figures and uh, been doing that ever since. Then we decided, you know what, let's try to figure out if we can teach people how to make multiple six figures and actually have a sustained life with this, right? Not just $30,000 a year, which by the way, the average median income for photography in, uh, photography in the United States is $32,000 a year, and videographers is 28. And there's a serious problem in the industry where you guys make substantially less money than we do, and you do substantially more work, don't you? Well, I know I do. Right? I mean, just your editing process alone and having to actually tell a story with your edits is, the, is more time consuming than what we do editing our photos by 10 times, at least, right? And so the way in which you demand money from people is to create something that is not like anything else, right? And so in order to do that, you can't just make wedding videos that are the same as Joe down the street, first of all, right? It has to be different, has to be unique, has to... I have to be able to see your video and go, man, that was, you know, John's video. I love that guy. Every time I see his video, I know it's John, right? So you have to ask yourself, what, what sets your, your videos apart? Or if I played your video and somebody else's video back, like, right next to each other, would I even be able to tell? And if not, there's a massive problem, right? With, with photographers, most of us differentiate ourselves right off the bat. And it's not because we intentionally did it. It's just because we probably messed something up, <laughs> right? And then we were like, you know what? We're a bright and airy photographer now, right? Or somebody over here was like, oh, look at this. I created this one thing with this one light. And it's like, all right, I'm a moody and dramatic photographer, right? So there's very vast differences between looking at photos. But when you look at wedding videos, you guys have to take a story, and then you have to use your color grading and all this other stuff to actually put that look on there, right? We don't have to do that with our edits, but it's something that you guys have to do, or else it just looks like another video, right? So anyway, some of the stuff that I want to teach you um, comes from a lot of the experience that I've worked with. So myself personally with Luray Photography, we've spent $50,000 or more on uh, Facebook ads in just the last few years. And we do that because we make an eight times return on our investment, okay? So this is what we're going to go through today. Um, we're going to talk about why Facebook ads, what is the power of them. We're going to take a look at the big picture and what exactly you guys can, uh, like the, the entire process and system that I teach um, and why most of you believe that Facebook ads don't work. And that has to, a lot to do with back in the day. Remember we also used to have Facebook pages and like when you posted something, you'd get like tons of likes and comments and stuff. And then all of a sudden one day Facebook was like, nope. And then now the, I think the percentage is zero point or 0.01% of the people that follow your Facebook page and like your Facebook page actually will see your posts on that page now if you don't pay for it. Okay, so not much is happening unless you are consistently posting on there and you're posting something that is engaging and if you want to bump it up a notch, then you need to pay for it. And that was the whole thing. Facebook built a free platform and then we got mad at them <laughs> because they stopped allowing us to generate our businesses off of their free platform and they started charging for it. But if you pay them for it, and you pay them 
and you do it in a way that has a system that you can follow that gets repeated results, then it's absolutely worth it every single time. All right, so we're also gonna look at the breakdown of my Facebook ads workflow, and we're gonna go into three different secrets for you. I'm gonna show you actual case studies of people and ads. I'm gonna show you the back end of Facebook so that you guys can see what it's actually like. So uh, many of you have probably never even opened your ads manager even though you already have access to it, okay? And then we're gonna talk about um, where we send that traffic when people click on the ad and so forth and so on, okay? So first, let's get into these three secrets. You can generate more leads with 10 times the ROI with Facebook ads than any other advertising platform. Secret number two is I can target and attract the exact client I want, no more booking remorse. How many of you guys have booked a client in like December for like March and they were last minute and you just needed it but on the phone, the consult was not going well, and this person is giving you all the telltale signs that they're gonna want you to do all these crazy things, and they're gonna be on the phone with you nonstop, and they're gonna be, never be happy, but yet you book them anyway, right? Because what happens with us in weddings is we get to December, and we're going, 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 shooting in October and November and September, and then before you know it, we've done no marketing for the next year, so we always panic, right? We have that, that panic moment of the December, oh my God, I'm, not, I'm gonna go out of business again this year, <laughs> right? Like every year that happens because you're not marketing, you're not doing anything, no one knows you exist. Doesn't matter how good your work is, if no one knows you exist, right? All right, and then Facebook ads don't just work, they can change everything for your business. So we already went through most of these questions. All right. So with Facebook ads, you actually can target your ideal client, okay? And I'm gonna show you this really quickly so that you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, I'm just opening up my ads manager so I can show you the back end of everything here. Okay, so let's say you're, at your, you're, in your, you're on your Facebook page, right? This is your Facebook page. There's a little drop-down menu here. We open this. You're gonna see your page right here. You're not gonna see business manager unless you've actually created one, but you're gonna see things like manage ads or create ads, something like that, okay? Once you click on manage ads, that's what then takes you over to uh, your Facebook ads back end. And what I've gone into is what's called the audience insights tab. Now, this is the part of Facebook where I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell Facebook exactly who I wanna find, okay? I'm gonna say, this is my ideal client, I want people uh, in Philadelphia, because I'm in South Jersey. All right, so I'm gonna tell it I want it. Philadelphia, and then the age range of people is between 24 and 35, because I gotta get those millennials that are getting married. And then I only want it to show to women, because they're the ones on Facebook looking for the photographer for the vast majority of them. And then in this interest part, I can put in, hold up. This is, this is my trick called stealing wedding wires clients. Okay, it's the most brilliant thing I've ever come up with and they don't know it, but check this out. We can target people that live in Philadelphia between the age ranges of 24 and 35 that like wedding wire, okay? That's literally a layup, okay? So any ad now that I run with this little um, grouping of things is going to be served only to people that like wedding wire. No one likes wedding wire unless they're getting married, right? Make sense? Yeah. So this means my ad is only gonna be shown to those people. So it's literally, you can't go wrong, except for 
What does the ad say? What are you offering? What's the landing page you're sending them to? Is it your website? Because if it is, it's not gonna work. So there's a lot of other things, but at least this is your first stepping stone, okay? The first thing is, anybody that you wanna target is on Facebook. Every single you know, Fortune 500 company is using it. Every creative agency, every, every business, every business is using Facebook ads. Why? Because there is, what, six billion people on Facebook or something crazy, okay? So whenever I hear, uh, my, my ideal client's not on Facebook, I say, really? Because there's only two billion people that are not on Facebook of all the world. <laughs> the rest of the world is on it, right? Um, so now, let's say for instance, um, we wanna go even further than that, okay? We have all these different categories, business and industry, entertainment, relationships, all this stuff, right? My ideal client is someone that's working in healthcare. Okay, so for weddings, I want nurses, I want doctors, and the reason is because they spend 100% of their day using the non-creative side of their brain to execute the tasks that they have to for their business, right, or for their job. And so they actually, like proven statistics show, they value photography and videography and the arts more so than most of the other industries because it, that is their outlet, right? Now, they can't paint, they can't take photos, you know, they may not be able to do video, but they appreciate it so much and they will pay 10% more for it, okay? Same thing with um, the LGBTQ community. They will pay 10 to 15% more for your services because they've never been able to celebrate their love before, okay? So if you wanna offer weddings, that's cool, but if you offer weddings to a specific grouping of people, um, then you're going to be able to charge more. It's called specializing, right? Um, it's just like people that have uh, their photography websites up and it's like, I do families and I do maternity and I do weddings and I do, you know, <laughs> like everything. And it's like, okay, well, I'm never hiring you. Why? Because you don't specialize in anything. You're probably gonna be subpar at all those, right? Jack of all trades, master of none. Right, right? So now when I come down here, I can look at all these other things, like sports that are into, right? I ran an ad one time, I'm an Eagles fan, so get over it, everyone. Um, <laughs> I'm an Eagles fan, and I, and I was like, you know what, I wonder if I can get wedding clients that are also Eagles fans. So, put in Philadelphia Eagles as another interest, sure enough, I got a bunch of Eagles fans and I started shooting their weddings, right? So, this is not something that you can argue with, will it work, will it not work, it works. It's just that it takes a lot of work to learn the system, to learn Facebook ads, right? There's a lot of nuances and as soon as you learn it, it will change because Facebook changes all the time. And uh, every time they do, I have to make all of my courses all over again. It's fun, really fun. But the power is here. So let's say for instance, you want to, um, let's see, in the interest here, we can do things like relationship status. So, Oops, I hit that on accident. Yeah, it's easier to just type it in. Engagement. And then we can do wedding. What one did you just type in? Engaged. We have wedding dress, right? So these are all things, like people are not gonna be interested in these things unless they're getting married, right? Like they're not gonna put on their Facebook, I'm engaged, if they're not engaged, right? So as soon as someone sets their relationship status to engaged, you can then target them with your ads. So it's literally a layup. So number one we, thing that we've established is that you can reach your ideal client on Facebook, right? Now we need to figure out how do we reach them and with what message do we reach them and where do we send them and how do we get them to pay us money, right? So this again is just the back end and the cool thing is that after I've typed in all this stuff, right, I, wanted, I want people in Philadelphia between this age range that are women that are interested in wedding stuff, over here on this side, it shows us a lot of really in interesting information. So we know the job titles that they all work in. Um, and you can see in my area, healthcare and medical services is huge because Philly is, you know, tons and tons and tons of hospitals and UPenn and all those different uh, colleges and whatnot are there. So we have a, a huge plethora of the healthcare people. But it doesn't just stop there. You also have like their activity. So I can see that these people over here that I outlined, 
in the last 30 days have clicked on 38 ads. That means they're clicking on an ad at least once a day, if not more. On your ad? No, this is just ads in general, not my ads specifically. Because I get a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't think my people are on Facebook or, you know, I never click ads, so no one else does. And it's like, none of that even makes sense in your head if you think about what you just said, right? Like, because I don't do this, do this no one else does. <laughs> it's like, just never true, <laughs> right? So you're so clicking to your target audience and that's going to show you what they're doing at the time, uh, what they're doing, like you got 38, they clicked on 38 ads. So that's because of the people you picked on the left. So if you just change your pick on the left, I can show you a different mm -hmm. graph right. of who's picking, who's hitting those ads. Correct. That helps you get tighter in to what you're looking for. Correct. So you keep clicking until you see what you want. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, like. You're not wasting your money. Right. So yeah. And so I, I can see here, like, what they click, right? So they don't ever click on things on their desktop, 0%. So if I ran an ad and showed it on desktop, That'd be dumb, right? But if I showed it on mobile, then look, 62% of people only use their mobile. 38% um, use desktop and mobile. But still, in 2020, people don't trust to make a purchase on their phone. They will click on your ad on their phone and then remember it and then go back to their desktop and actually then go purchase or, or do whatever it is they need to do on there, right? But this just gives you a little bit of insight into what they do, the, uh, the different jobs that they have, um, and like, see, I can see here, based on my, what I've outlined over here, that 25% are in a relationship, 31% are married, 14% are engaged, and 29% are single, and then guess what? 70% of them have a college education. So I can go over here and type in college grad, right? And this is how you filter to get to your, the client that's actually gonna be able to afford you, right? Because we could just, go after people that are engaged, that's fine, but I want those people to have a college education because that means they probably have a better job and that means they're probably getting married in a better venue, right? Here's the other cool thing. Uh, if there's big venues around, like especially up here in North Jersey, they have like huge venues that have big followings, right? On their Facebook pages, they have big followings. If that's the case, you can type that business in to this interests and then you can target all of the brides that like that venue. Right. Yeah. Right. So as soon as a, a bride's just scrolling through her normal day and she's looking for wedding venues and she finds, um, you know, Chateau or the Palace or whatever else, right? And she likes the page. That's a layup for you because now you can then target her and go, hey, looks like you found your wedding venue. You're going to need a photographer. Let me help you. Here's my, uh, here's an article I wrote on the top 10 wedding venues in North Jersey, right? Here's how to, here's a wedding planning guide I wrote on uh, every part of the wedding day, whether or not to do a first look, um, you know, what, what type of dress you should have. If it's a beach wedding, don't have your hair down, right? Like all the things that drive us insane. So, do the card readings to each other. Is it worth it or not? Right. Right. So this is where all the, the magic happens, okay? All right, let's go back here. All right, so this is Abby and Andy. They were wedding, they're wedding photographers, and when I started working with them, they wanted to launch a new brand uh, into uh, boudoir. They wanted to start shooting boudoir. So when we launched their first ad campaign, excuse me, they got 285 inquiries in five days, and they spent $106.51. So from that, they booked 21 new boudoir sessions, and they made $32,000 in a month. How many of you guys have made $32,000 in one month? I shot 25 weddings in a, in a month. <laughs> right. I'm talking physical money coming into your bank account in one month, 32,000. How about 20,000? Okay. How about 10,000 in one month? 5,000 in one month. 3,000 in one month. Some of you have not made 3,000 in one month? Okay, all right. So we have some work to do because the money's there, the people are there, but, it, but I remember when I asked that first question, what are you guys doing to get your clients and make them know about you? None of you raised your hands for the most part. This is gonna be key. 
All right? You're going to want to pay attention. All right, so here's uh, some of the proof from their Facebook ads. You can see that they spent $106.51 and got 285 inquiries. This is the actual ad that they used. So you can see the copy that we wrote, and you can see it was... Um, it reached 18,000 people. Imagine what the difference would be between you sitting behind your computer and hoping people find you, and then having 18,000 people know about you. That's huge. All right, so here's some of the big pictures, okay? Oops. Have any of you boosted a post on Facebook? That means you post it on your Facebook page, and then uh, there's a blue shiny button that says boost, and then you click on it, and then you just donate to Mark Zuckerberg's new t-shirt fund. How many have done that? Click the blue shiny button, okay? And it's always for like 10 or $20, and you're like, okay, I'll do it. And you do it, and you're like, did anything even happen? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah. That's because you're not supposed to do that. That's literally a marketing ploy from Facebook, and I, I always call it the donate to Mark Zuckerberg's new t-shirt fund, because they're expensive t-shirts he wears, and it's the same t-shirt every time. Um, so don't do that anymore. There's a correct way to do it by posting on your business page, creating your business Facebook account. Um, and if you want to write this down, this may be important. If you do not have a Facebook account, it's free, okay? You only get charged when you run ads. You need to go to business.facebook.com. Business.facebook.com. And you'll just create your account there. And then you'll be able to go into your ads manager and boost that post through the ads manager and use all of the same interest and in targeting and everything that we were just uh, talking about. Okay? Uh, this takes a lot of work, um, especially once we get into the, the next part of this. The first part of figuring out that you can use Facebook is easy. But then actually using Facebook with, without a system can really screw you up and you can use, lose a lot of money really quickly. And so you want to make sure that you utilize a, a proven system within that. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to be intentional and what we want to do is become the thought leader. So when you think about marketing, most people don't think outside of the box of their normal, in their own shoes, right, what they're doing. But for instance, when it comes to weddings, a bride and a groom are typically getting married for the first time, right? So they are not the expert. Um, they're planning a wedding and they're probably stressed, right? And Auntie Lou is probably over here like trying to like scream in the bride's ear like, oh, no, you got to do this. You have to have goldfish, live goldfish in the centerpieces. And you're like, no, they're going to die. And it's like, but I have to, you have to have them. I'm paying for part of this. I deserve a say, right? So there's like lots of stress happening, right? But we can relate to that and we can help them through those, pro through those things because we are the professional. We're shooting weddings every weekend, right? So we write articles like, um, you know, doing a receiving line eats up 45 minutes of your wedding day. Right? They don't know that. They don't realize that that 45 minutes could be used for um, you know, portrait time or doing some other video work or whatever else or just hanging with their friends. Instead, they're standing there and shaking everyone's hand and normally that makes the whole day fall behind. Right? Or, um, hey, when you're picking out your, your wedding venue, make sure that wherever you're going to be getting ready has a window in it. <laughs> right? How many times are we so frustrated? We walk into a place and we're like, are we seriously in a dungeon here? Like, what is happening, right? So those are ways that you can take charge. You can start blogging things that are tips, that are actual helpful, helpful information for your potential clients. Instead, you probably just put your wedding videos up there, right? And maybe, you, maybe you'll blog about the wedding, right? And you'll pull a couple stills from, from your frames to be able to have a, more on your post, right? No one cares. No one cares. They've already made their decision because they've seen your stuff on social media or they've heard from somebody else. Um, and so by the time they get to your website in, in 2020, they are basically fully educated as far as what your work looks like. They just need to know two things. What is the experience of working with you going to be like and why are you different than the thousands of other options I have and how much is this gonna cost me, okay? And when they get to your website, our statistics show that they will stay for one second. One, okay? So that means whatever at the top of your website, before what we call the page break, that means before they have to scroll, better have what's called a call to action, a button that they can click that is talking about the experience of working with you and pricing, right? And for all of you guys, please stop hiding your pricing, okay? It is killing your business. 10 years ago, it was helping your business. 
but it does not work with millennials. <clears throat> the moment that they feel, feel that you're hiding something from them or not being upfront, they are gone, right? And they don't care. <laughs> like, they don't care at all about you. So you need to be the one that's proactively setting up an environment where when they come to your website, they are getting helped because they are very needy. I'm a millennial, I can say that, okay? Um, and so they come to your website and you give them a, a wedding planning guide and it goes through all the stuff we talked about, right? The, the lighting for the first look, make sure that when you're in your room, uh, there's a window, right? All these different things, help them plan their timeline, that kind of stuff, right? Now I realize a lot of that stuff happens from photographers, right? And you guys end up having to just kind of deal with what was already established with the photographer. But that's because you let it happen, right? Like, at the end of the day, you could be like, no, this is how we do it, and this is what we do, and, we, you know, we run the day, and we set up the shots, right? And then, at the end of the day, it's also communication between you and the photographer, right? And that's what makes a great team, even though you guys work for separate companies. If you can communicate and work that stuff out ahead of time, which is what we always do, we always email the videographer way before the wedding day and go, hey, uh, want to make sure you're able to get your shots. Um, this is how we normally do it. Um, tell me where in that process you need time. Right, and then they normally email us back, and they're like, oh, "We do this, we do that," and we're like, "All right, perfect. We have a great game plan." Right, and all that happens behind the back of the bride. She doesn't know any of that's happening, and she just has a great, flawless wedding day. Right. All right, let's move on. Don't be a street club promoter. Most people that try Facebook ads try one ad, it doesn't work, and they give up. Right, and that is why I am so successful because all of the people give up. Right? I kept going. I spent $20,000 of my own money before I figured out how to do this. Okay? So I was very broke for a while <laughs> until I finally figured out what I was doing. Um, and it takes people multiple times of coming in contact with your brand to remember you. Right? So like if I say Nike or Apple, everyone goes, oh yeah, mm -hmm, I know it. Right? Or if you see the Apple logo or the Nike sign, you're, you already know it's Nike, right? But if you see Luray Photography, you're like, what's that? There's no, like, there's no like logo, you know, I don't recognize any photographer's logos ever, like literally none. Um, they're not recognizable, they're not, they're not, they don't stick in your head, right? So why is it that all these other businesses outside of the photography and videography industries end up knowing how to market themselves and brand themselves, but yet all of us here don't, right? We're just sitting here going, well, we do good work, Right? How come no one's contacting us? They don't know about you. So this is where this comes in. Don't be a street club promoter that's handing out the flyers, right? <laughs> on, on the corner, like, here, come to this strip club or, you know, come to this, like, concert or whatever, right? And what do you do with that thing as soon as you get it? You throw it down, right? It's just like business cards. You, like, please tell me you don't have business cards and you actually have gone digital because nobody holds business cards anymore, right? So with this... We have our blog, we got our website, we have Facebook, we have Pinterest, we have Instagram, we have Google, we have referrals, we have word of mouth, right? We have tons of different ways that people can hear about us, but how many of these platforms are you on actively using them every day? Just put up your hand. Are you on social media, posting and working on your business and telling people about yourself every day? Okay, you don't want it bad enough. I'm just gonna be real with you, I'm a very real person. Like Right, but I mean, most of the problems for us is like this: we are like one man person, or me and my wife. We don't have, to, we don't have the time to do it ourselves. In market. I do. Well, now I'm talking about me and you know my business. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the problems. Like we we experience as like small businesses in the photography and video. Right. So I'm the same as you. I'm a husband wife team, right? And I made time. I got up earlier in the morning. I stayed up later at night until I established my business, business and made it a luxury brand and could demand six to $10,000 per client and I can reject anyone I don't want now, right? But that was 10 years of work, of getting up at five in the morning and making sure that I set my entire social media schedule for the whole month and have it auto post, right? So it's utilizing your time better and it's being more intentional and it's setting goals. How much money do you wanna make a year, just in general? 130. Is that your goal, or do you want to make more? Well, well more is better, but you know, it's sometimes not original. Sure. So, 130 gross, or are you bringing home 
gross, okay, so probably like 80. Okay, 80 is a great amount of money. I think you're doing fantastic, so don't, don't, say what, don't, think, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm just saying if you wanna make 500,000, if you wanna make 400,000, 300,000, 200,000 to make yourself super comfortable, it takes a whole nother mindset, okay? Remember when we were growing up and our grandma gave us $10 and we were like, oh my God, $10, it was like the most money you've ever had in your life, right? Then you grow up a little bit and then you're in high school and then like your grandmom gives you a hundred bucks and you're like, oh my God, this is the most money I've gotten ever in one amount of money, right? And then you get a job and you get your first paycheck and it's like $1,000 and you're like, whoa, this is cool. Wait, who took 70% of my paycheck? Oh, the government? Okay, right? You realize these things and then, then you uh, have your own business and maybe you made your first $2,500 sale for a wedding video and you're like, man, this is, this is awesome, right? Every single time that that happens, a veil is sort of lifted over your eyes and you realize the potential. Whereas now $10 doesn't seem that big to you anymore, right? Pretty much everyone in this room probably $10 is not that much money, right? You, don't, you wouldn't like, I don't know, flip out if someone stole $10 from you. But if they stole $2,500 from you, <laughs> you better believe you'd be on the phone, right? With the police trying to figure out what's happening. So it's all mindset for the most part when it comes to your business. You are very limited, I'm very limited, but if you and I start the same business next to each other in buildings in the same area and I get up two hours earlier than you and I go to bed two hours later than you and I work my ass off more than you, I'm always gonna win, every time, every time. So it's what are your goals and what are you willing to sacrifice to achieve them? If $130,000 is exactly where you wanna be or it's comfortable and you're fine, then keep doing what you're doing. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with any amount of money that you make, right? But what I'm saying is if you want to make more money or if you have goals of actually making multiple six figures a year, you have to work harder than, your, than, than the other competition. And there's something that in marketing that proves true every time and it's, the person that can afford to pay the most to achieve the client will always win. That's why Budweiser is still around, right? They make one of the shittiest beers in the world and they are huge. They make tons and tons of money. Why? Because they have commercials with frogs, right? We'll find out on Sunday. And they have commercials with <laughs> thoroughbred horses, right? Has, has nothing to do with their beer at all, <laughs> right? Like the frogs, I don't even meet, get to meet the frogs. I just drink the crappy beer, that's it. Like there's no benefit to me, but their marketing keeps them in the front of your mind, right? And so if you went into a store that was another really shitty beer, but you had never heard of it, you're not gonna buy it. You're gonna buy Budweiser. Why? Because the frogs, right? Same thing with Geico. They have lizards, right? And they have cavemen. It has nothing to do with insurance, right? But it sticks in your mind and you can't forget them. Right? Cool. All right. <clears throat> All right, so here's the potential customer flow. This is how Facebook ads work, okay? We're never going to send somebody to our website, first of all. And the reason is because your website has your About Us section, your Portfolio section, your Info section, your Contact Us section. And so when people get to your website from an ad, then they're like, oh, look at all these buttons, right? And then if you have something other than the niche in which your ad was for, so say it was a wedding ad and they clicked and then they see families, they're like, hmm, I'm not in the right place. They click out because they think there's something wrong, right? So we don't ever send them there because we only want one button on that page, one button. And that button is click and give me your information, right? And so everything starts with a Facebook ad. When they click on that ad, we're either gonna send them to a blog post or we're gonna send them to a landing page. A landing page, I'm gonna show you an example of it in a minute, but it doesn't have any of the uh, menus on it at the top. It has one offer on it. It's something that we're asking them to do. We're calling them out and saying, hey, do you want this or not? If not, then leave. If you want it, then click this button. That's it. Making simple decisions for people because when they get to a website that has all this other stuff and all this other info, it's overwhelming and they're gonna end up leaving, okay? So from there, we're gonna ask them for their information, their email, their name. When they give it to us, we're gonna then forward them over to a thank you page that says uh, something along the lines of either like join our Facebook group, right, our VIP, for our VIP clients, or maybe watch this video of all of the highlights from the past year, 
Um, or check this out. This is Samantha's story from her wedding day. And uh, just before her wedding day, her dad got sick with brain cancer. And so what we ended up doing was going over to her house and letting her do a first look before the wedding, like a week or so before the wedding. And like dad came out and saw her get in her dress and then the grandson was there and all this other stuff, right? Now we turned that into a story because it was incredible. He ended up dying three days before uh, the wedding, but at least she had all those moments, right? Well, that is what draws people in. That's real life, right? And so we, we take that video and we use that as an ad and, and say something along the lines of, you know, time is short, uh, enjoy and soak in your family every single moment all the time, you know, because you never know when it's gonna end kind of thing, right? That's different than book me for your wedding photographer, right, or 20% off wedding packages. <laughs> so this is the entire process. They go to that thank you page, they see those things, and then because they opted in, we have email marketing that happens as well. So when they give us their information on anywhere on our website, they're gonna get a series of emails that then go out to them without me doing anything, okay? And it's gonna be testimonials from our past clients, blog posts, uh, wedding planning guides, all this really helpful information so that it helps them in their decision making along the way. Does that make sense? Yeah. When you put an ad, right, does it go also to the like, personnel or like other clients which are showing up your friends, right? Say that one more time, I couldn't hear you. So when you, when you create an ad, right, so that like then you specify like I want to go to New York and New Jersey. Mm -hmm. That goes also to, to the clients who are not not clients, like you know, to like uh, other than being friends of Facebook. Right? Other f other friends? Other than besides, being friends. Besides your friends. Besides your oh friends. yeah, yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, you're not gonna show it to your friends. You're gonna show it to people that have never heard of you. Yeah. Is that yeah. does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so this may be hard to see, but this is an entire Facebook campaign planned out so you can see it, okay? So over here, this is the actual ad. This says, don't get FOMO. We've done all the grunt work for you. If you've recently gotten engaged, congratulations. Wedding planning can be overwhelming at times, which is why we put together our 77-page wedding planning guide. Inside the guide, you'll find great advice on everything on how to plan your timeline, what to wear for your engagement session, um, know somebody that recently got engaged, tag them in the comments, feel free to share this as well. Now, since I've launched this ad, Facebook has changed four times. I can no longer say, tag your friends in your comments and feel free to share this. I also can't say the word overwhelmed. Uh, no negative words can be used on Facebook anymore. Um, let's see what else. Um, Right, okay, that's it, that's it, right? So when they click on this ad, it's gonna bring them to a half landing page. That is the full page that you're looking at right there, and all it says is uh, planning your wedding doesn't have to be overwhelming, download our free wedding planning guide. When they click that button that says click here to get your guide, that little form pops up, and it says uh, your name and email, and then they hit submit, and then it redirects them to a thank you page, which looks like this, and it just says, thanks for getting in touch. Your wedding planning guide should be in your inbox shortly. And then there's a video here of our 2016 top moments, right? So all the best pictures from that, um, from that year. Once, they've, once they submitted that form, an email sequence was also triggered. So you can see there's six different emails there that are being sent to people automatically. So how to rock your wedding photos, how to rock your wedding timeline, wedding invitations, wedding flowers, and then at the very end, it's, do you still need a wedding photographer? So we're giving them great info, great info, great info, great info. Hey, by the way, do you want to book us? Because we've established that trust. They now trust our brand. They've gotten actual information from us that was helpful in their wedding planning process. We eased a burden of theirs, even though it wasn't paying us for wedding photography, right? But we've made what they're doing easier. And so people value that. You ever walk into a store, uh, especially like an audio store, maybe you were buying like a, a new TV or something, you have no idea what you're talking about and so you actually do need help, right? And you walk in and someone comes up to you and actually greets you and then, you know, helps you and they give you really good advice. It's valuable, right? But if they weren't there, you'd probably be searching in the store forever 
right? Unless you actually got out your phone and like started looking on consumer reports and like, all right, well this one has this and this one has this, right? You're doing all the work yourself as opposed to having someone have already done that work for you, right? And that's what we're doing. We're taking control of the entire flow and process of the marketing chain, okay? And then over on this side here, this is um, one of the emails that they get. So right at the top, they can download the free wedding planning guide. Um, they can see our portfolio from inside our email. We talk about a little bit about us um, in this bottom section. And then we say, hey, by the way, uh, view a full wedding gallery. Um, that's one thing that a lot of photographers don't do. And uh, videographers um, you know, oftentimes are giving three to five minute uh, like clips, but oftentimes are not giving um, like the full, not the raw footage, but like the full 25 or so minute one, right? And uh, so we always want to show that full 25 minute one in addition to the three to five so, um, for, for videography in the same sense that we show a full wedding gallery. And why we do that is because most photographers suck at the reception, right? And most videographers suck at the reception. So you need them to see that you're great at the reception as well as outdoors. And they don't know that and they don't know why they need to know that. But at the end of the day, when they see, if you actually do well and you use lighting in the reception and, and you use it well and, you, and you, your wedding reception stuff uh, doesn't take a, a step down from the rest of the day, you automatically are going to win. Because anyone can watch a movie and, and be like, that was a great movie because it was consistent and everything was right. The color grading was good, right? But if you have reception footage of everything being orange, <laughs> right, and all crazy crappy and the color and temperature is off, people will realize that, right? And so one of the ways that we actually get people to book with us over other people is we say, now listen, we, we do educate photographers from all over the world on how to do lighting, so you don't have to worry if, uh, you know, there's a rainy wedding day. We'll actually probably give you even better photos uh, because of that because it's really fun for us. It's challenging. Um, but as you're in your search for your wedding photographer, here's a couple things to keep in mind. If a wedding photographer does not have a studio, you're running an extreme risk of if, for some reason, and hopefully it doesn't happen, they don't deliver your wedding photos, you're not gonna be able to track them down, they're not gonna have an accountability with the Better Business Bureau, they probably aren't insured. So make sure that they're insured, make sure they have a physical studio. Guess what they do on their phone calls now? They're, do you have a physical studio? You don't. And just because I said it to them, right? They believe it's true because I'm genuinely telling them information. So I eliminate half my competition by telling them that. And also I say, and make sure that they send you a full wedding gallery. And I explain that most photographers are great in the daylight, but when it comes to the reception, those photos are awful typically, and they're super dark and you can't tell what's happening. And then we send them a wedding gallery and they can see that our work is perfect. And then when they request a wedding gallery from someone else, if they don't give it to them, they're automatically out. And if they do give it to them, they're going to put it up against our wedding gallery. And guess what? We're going to crush it every time unless they actually know how to do lighting, right? So a lot of different advantages that we are able to get from this because we're able to position all this information ahead of time before anyone else even sees them or hears about them or anything like that, right? We're getting in front of them as soon as they switch that status on Facebook to engaged, all right? <clears throat> Okay, so Facebook ads, the bomb diggity, okay? Um, I just kind of compare this to the not really quickly, and uh, this can basically apply to any other platform, Wedding Wire, or however, whoever else you pay to get leads. Uh, but with the not, there's no ability to actually target anything other than a bride. Like, you can't, like, be like, I want a do-it-yourself type of bride, or I want people that do small weddings, or elopements, or any of that. Um, or like that are not getting married in a wedding factory in New Jersey uh, and instead going to Colorado on top of a mountain, right? Um, they let other vendors respond to your inquiry, which is mind-blowing to me. So like when we were on The Knot, people would email us and then The Knot would be like, oh, since you emailed them, here's five other photographers that you may like as well. <laughs> and we're like, wait a second, they clicked on us though. And you're literally, that, that's like got to be against the law somehow, right? And then so a bride would maybe click on two or three people's things and then she gets 15 replies back because she didn't apply to those other, you know, 10 people, right? So a lot of crazy stuff. No phone number. You can't call them. If you guys get an inquiry, you got to call them, okay? You'll, have, you'll increase your booking uh, rate by at least 70% just by within the first 15 minutes of getting an inquiry, calling them, okay? 
that's just a little nugget of advice, free nugget of advice for you, okay? Um, but these are just some statistics versus Facebook ads versus the non, okay? Go back, go back. Oh. Go back, go back, go back. I have a question right there. Yeah. Well, what is it? Okay, so you are saying, so it's 300 to 500 per month. I understand that. It's even, even more. So what is the difference on pricing between the non and Facebook? So Facebook, you're getting leads for between a dollar and two dollars. On the knot, you can pay three to five hundred. I was paying fifteen hundred a month, and I was getting two leads a month from the knot. So that was seven hundred and fifty dollars a lead. <laughs> I was paying one hundred eighty dollars a month, and I got no leads. Yeah. I got two emails that they ghosted. Yep. All right, I'm just going to skip over this part because hopefully you guys know. Okay, so let's pivot a little bit, right? I think we know Facebook's at, Facebook ads work. Um, it takes work, but, but like what, what should we be using, right? So I wanna show you this one video, and this is an opportunity for you guys to reach out to photographers and start offering them this service because you can charge three to $5,000 just to produce a video just like this that takes you a half a day, okay? And that's not a year and a half of a wedding that's gonna pay you 2,500, right? So check this out. This video we used to, to completely explode this person's business. They went from $130,000 to $500,000 this year they'll hit. Every woman, no matter what size, what age, what color they are, how many bumps or bruises they have, deserves to feel beautiful in their own skin exactly how they are. Everything in our world right now is against a woman. It's everything is telling us that we're we're not beautiful and that we aren't perfect the way that we are when we are. And I think that um, having a boudoir shoot done changes your view of yourself. It's kind of like, you know, you see like the ma like the magazines in Vanity Fair and you see these women and you think like they're so beautiful. And then you go to the reveal session, and then you're the beautiful one. You get that. I finally got to see myself through his eyes. He's like, this is how I feel about you every day. Like, this is how much I love you. This is like what I think of you, and it's so pretty and beautiful I think you are. And so I think getting to see myself through his eyes for the first time was priceless. So being able to give somebody the gift of seeing themselves, who, how they really are and how beautiful they actually are, is empowering to me. It makes me feel like I have a, I have a gift to give and, and what I'm giving them is powerful and makes me confident in return. So I'm showing these women how to feel great in their skin. And in return, I can feel great about my body and know that I have a great support system of women who are confident in themselves and not down on themselves. And then as I'm learning to do that about myself through these women, I am able to teach my daughter that. And I'm able to show her that being comfortable in your skin is a normal thing and that's a great thing. And that no matter what other people say, you should always feel that way. When Abby was taking my pictures, she knew exactly what to take, how to pose me, how to bring out the good points and work on those. It was, it was amazing. I would just say do it. Just, you have to. You have to. You'll be so surprised. So do you, did you see a lot of the marketing things that I was already talking about in that video? Yeah. They were addressing what's called the problem and solution method, okay? So... When it comes to boudoir especially, women believe they have to lose, lose 10 pounds first, right, before they would get in front of a camera. Um, maybe they had, you know, uh, self-esteem issues or, or uh, they're not confident in their own body, all these different things, right? And so to have those people on camera, and you see the one girl that's like, you know, 300 pounds, you know, almost in tears because she truly felt beautiful for the first time in her life. That is true marketing. Why? Because it's relatable. It's vulnerable, right? Vulnerability is one of the, the things that sells 
uh, the most. So the more vulnerable you are, and the more you put yourself out there, it actually separates you from the people that you probably wouldn't have wanted to work with anyway. And so I always tell people, if you're a Democrat, talk about Democrat things, right? If you're a Republican, talk about Republican things, because the worst thing, especially in this day and age, is if you're a Democrat, and then you have a brighter room that's a Republican, and they are like super Republican, and they're talking to you all the time about it, or vice versa, it's gonna be a weird, awkward situation, right? It, especially it, nowadays. Especially nowadays. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal, you know, 10 years ago. But in this situation, it would be, right? And so we even have, I even know one, one person who is a uh, boudoir photographer that gets tons of bad reviews because uh, it's not really bad reviews. It's people not liking that he's doing boudoir, right? And so then he actually takes all these bad reviews like, oh, my God, this is disgusting. I can't believe you did this. And he literally uses those as ads. Why? Because he's getting the exact people he wants. He doesn't want people that just want a fashion shoot. He wants couples to sort of be intimate together in the studio and have those uh, pictures, right? And so by putting all those things on there with the bad reviews, it's perfect for him because it's getting him the exact client he wants, right? Yeah, he gets the next one to Right. So let me show you uh, another video, and this is a wedding video. So for this video... <clears throat> This is one of my done-for-you clients, so that means that uh, we handle all his marketing. Um, we help him with what to do, we, what to create, all that kind of stuff. And so we had him reach out to his past clients. They came to my studio, and I had him hire a video crew, and I directed this, this film. And I do this quite often for my clients because I'm not a videographer, but I know what the story that needs to be told is, right? And so I direct everything. I coach this person. Um, before, like, as soon as she got there, we sat down, we went over the questions I was going to ask her, and we did some test runs, and I got up on camera, and I answered the questions for her so that she could see what we were, like, going for, um, and then we finally filmed it, and then we had um, put the pictures over top of it, um, like the stills, so you can get an idea. She was on Facebook, and her friend from St. Joe's had just gotten married and posted all of her pictures online, and right away my sister called me, screaming. And I thought something had happened. And she was like, you have to go on Facebook and look at these wedding pictures. They're the most beautiful pictures I'd ever seen. The lighting was perfect. Ralph made us laugh the entire day. From the moment he walked into my parents' house, we were in our Christmas pajamas. He had all of the girls laughing. His team was fantastic. They made us feel comfortable. He knew my entire vision. Everything that I had talked to him about, that we had discussed, he not only enhanced it, but made it come to life in a way that I never thought was possible. If you're having any doubts about your photographer for your wedding day, hire Ralph Deal. He cares about your day just as much as you do, and he really brings that day to life. It was the best decision we made. So you guys see how that could be really helpful? Having videos like that, right? You all have videos, you all have video cameras. You can start doing this for your own business tomorrow, right? Call some of your past clients up. Um, have them come into the studio, especially if you've actually established a rapport with them. Um, you know, for us, most of our, the people that we, we're our clients are our friends on Facebook now. Uh, and that's how we uh, let, uh, get so many more referrals because we're actually friends. They feel like we're doing us a disservice if they don't tell people about us, right? So this type of video, maybe cost this guy $800 to put together, right? And some time and coordinating and stuff like that. But we run that video as an ad all year long. And uh, we turn it off during the holidays because no one cares during those times, right? But uh, the rest of the year we run it and he just gets a solid stream of, of uh, leads. Why? Because he's putting it out there, right? It's a, another person's view of what it's like to work with him. And so, we put it out there in, the, in a video, and it's a tangible way. It shows what the experience of working with him is like. The only thing that's missing is, wait, how do I sign up? How much do I have to pay? Right? And that gets them curious enough to actually take that step and reach out to us. So his entire marketing budget was on the knot, $1,500 a month. He doesn't have to pay that anymore. All he does is run this ad for $5 a day. Right? So think about that. $5 a day, that's about, you know, what you would pay the not for their two or $300 a month type situation, but yet he never has to worry about bookings anymore from a simple ad of telling people about himself, right? You, no one knows you exist. You're not going to book anyone. So basically just one testimonial, he runs it. Now for $5 a day, how many views does he get from that? 
Uh, he has it's somewhere like thirty thousand or something at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, being in our age, you're young, I understand. You mm -hmm. can work like more hours and you understand the system and all that. But being like me, like an older generation, so I don't have the desire, I don't have the, the force, I don't have the power to, to do all this. So, is this any service like us we can hire or like, somebody else will do it for us? Yeah, we do do this for people. Um, there's lots of companies that will do this for you. However, yeah, I'll say this though, right? So there's definitely some, um, we have a, like a split kind of going on in the room, but for, for people that are your age, I would say it's still about goals and what you want, right? So uh, whatever that looks like, you would have to come up with that and tell me specifically what that is, and then I would tell you what you would need to do to achieve it, right? And that's gonna go the same for everybody. But I will tell you one thing, you're not going to be able to do weddings forever, right? Right, right. So, so that's a good hopeful plan, but, there, but it's definitely not solid, right? If you want a solid plan, it's going to take a little bit more planning than that, obviously. But I think at the end of the day, like I said before, it's whatever you want it to be. Um, I know people that are 55, 65, 55 to 65 that are still crushing it. Cliff Mountainers out there still shooting. 40 weddings a year, right? And making money off of it. Not as much as he used to, but definitely still crushing it. But he is gonna run out of stuff to do as well, right? Um, eventually all of us are gonna get to an age where we can't do photography anymore, we need something else. And so, and most of us in the photography and videography careers struggle through most of our 30s and 40s, have very little life savings, and at the end of it, when your body stops working, you literally have no retirement, especially because you haven't been paying into <laughs> you know, the right things if you weren't a legit business, right? So it's a really dangerous spot, and I end up helping a lot of boomers with this type of thing um, because they just didn't plan the right way. They, they kind of felt like they were going to be young forever, and then all of a sudden when the body stopped working, then it was like, well, crap. It's too late to do anything about it, right? So I think... One of the biggest purposes that I have in my life is to make it so that people don't run into that problem. And you can make good money doing videography and good money doing photography, uh, even, you know, probably, you know, for a good 10, 15, 20 more years, right? Um, but is that what you want to do? That's the one question that I would ask you, you know? But I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I feel like it's, it's different for everybody in this room. For me, my end goal with everything I do is to open a place in Philly called Culture um, that has like a stage and bands and you can take like guitar lessons and you can record there with your band, right? Like so underprivileged kids in the city of Philadelphia would come there after school and maybe they're in a band. And so they start teaching guitar lessons to volunteer their time and that earns them you know, credits in the studio so they can record their album and then from there they can uh, do their CD release party at my place as well, right? And we want to partner with the, with the government in the city of Philadelphia to get them intern jobs with like the district attorney and stuff, jobs they would have never been able to get. And in turn, those companies will pay us for their tuition, right? And we can completely transform this world and get all these underprivileged people um, the exact type of opportunities that the rest of us white people have, right? So that's my end goal. What do I need for that? I need millions of dollars, right? Because I want to self-fund it. I don't want to have a bunch of partners. I want to self-fund it, and then I want to open them up in every city in the country, right? I have big goals. So I need lots and lots of money. So for me, I'm getting up at four, right? Or whatever I need to do to, to make that money because I know that what my goal is and what my life purpose is is to change the world, right? That's just me, though. So that doesn't mean that you have to have that same goal, right? Your goal is just as valid as mine, um, but you're going to only get to your goal if you proactively go after it intentionally, right? Whatever that goal is. Does that help? Yeah. Cool. So get up your ass and get up. <laughs> right. Because the truth is there's a whole other generation of younger videographers out there now, right? 
and they are hustling and working like crazy and they're probably undercharging, right? Right. So that the only reason why why your generation is complaining about the younger generation is because you didn't make your imprint and make your business the standard and make yourself known and put yourself out there, right? Because new people come along all the time, but Nike's still around, Apple's still around, right? Those, those businesses started just like ours, in a basement, okay? They got to where they're at because they invested into it and they built a brand that's recognizable. And all these young kids wouldn't have a shot against anyone in this room if you had a legitimate, like established, recognizable brand, right? And not even I have that. So <laughs> I'm just saying the truth, right? Okay. Um, how much more time we have? Yeah, we can take a five minute and then we'll come back and go into like the actual ads. All right, all right. Cool. Minute break. Yeah. All right, guys. Easton Reynolds. We're gonna go two. for like maybe 15 more minutes, okay? And I just want to give you um, some of the the actual implementation uh, aspect of this. Now that we've talked about so much of the other stuff. So what's on the screen right now is a mind map of the entire process of what we teach. So on the left-hand side, obviously, you have to know who your ideal client is, first of all, right? Um, if you don't know who that is, you, you really need to know that because with Facebook, like I've showed you, you can target your exact client, but if you don't know who that is, other than weddings or whatever, um, it would behoove you to do that. So then once you know that, then you're gonna create things like PDF downloads, cheat sheets, blog posts, things of that sort, right? Because those are that upfront value that we were talking about that you need to give away, and you're gonna be able to use those in your ads. Um, so once we've created all that stuff, we use that as an incentive to get them to give us their information. And then we create what's called a sales funnel. So we have our landing page, which we talked about where we send people uh, instead of our website. And we have our thank you page. And we take what's called the Facebook pixel. Everything I've been talking to you about all works because of the pixel. And the pixel is a little piece of HTML code that Facebook gives you. And you put it onto your website. And then any other time that people go to your website now, it tracks them and what they're doing. And if any of you have gone to a website and it says, a little pop-up comes up and says, this site uses cookies, click here to accept, right? That's because they're using the pixel. Whether it's Facebook's pixel or Google's pixel or YouTube's pixel, most of these companies all have pixels, okay? And you can use all of them, you can use one of them, two of them, whatever you want. But the way in which we can track their usage and then show those specific people ads is because we've had the pixel installed on our website, okay? So once we install that, then this is the, uh, the entire process of what happens. So people see our ad and then they're gonna go to our landing page, which the pixel is then going to fire because they visited it. And then from there, they're going to give us their information and uh, that's where we get into the, the back end of stuff. Once they've given us that information, we have to have email automation in place so that we can continue to nurture them and send them emails. And that doesn't mean that you say, hey, do you want to book with me now? How about now? How about now? How about now? It's giving that upfront value that we talked about. And then you know, after the fifth or sixth email, then giving them an opportunity to set up a consultation. Hey, click here to schedule your call with me or click here to call now, right? Um, giving them those the opportunities to be able to reach out. No, because you're not going to see it anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, and people do that all the time. I don't, it doesn't bother me. I want them to do that. I don't want my ad being wasted on them if they're not going to book with me anyway. Okay. Right? And the cool thing is, too, is like you can, say, you can set it up so that people that um, are already booked with you won't see those ads. Um, and so that's a little bit more complicated and in depth, but that's an essential piece of it as well because you don't want to have somebody that has booked with you at full price then see an ad for, you know, super discounted. something discounted and then be like, hey, what the hell, right? Hey, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So pretty important piece. Um, I'm not going to go into that on this uh, thing though, okay? So these are some ideas of what you can create. So this is actually a snippet from my website. Um, where it's our resources for wedding couples. And so we have all these different articles and, and whatnot on our website, and you can check it out. 
uh, if you want. Our website's Lou Ray Photography. It's L-U-R-E-Y Photography. Um, I, would, I would encourage you to just go check it out because there's a ton of different information on our site that you could probably, it'll probably bring everything together for you, everything we've been talking about because you'll be able to see it in action, right? But these are just a, a couple things that you can do, short eBooks, PDF download guides like wedding planning guide, cheat sheets, top 10 wedding venues in your area, all those different things. And these are what they look like. So on the left, you have two PDFs, right? They're very simple. We use a program that's free to create these things in less than five minutes because they already have templates up and all we have to do is edit the content and it's called canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com, canva.com. Um, and what we do is we put up one of those short landing pages and say, hey, do you want to um, know how to rock your wedding timeline? Five things to remember, five top tips. And then they give us their information and then we email them this PDF guide, right? Um, same thing, the wedding uh, experience is over there on the right. That's our wedding planning guide. That's the front cover. When somebody views our wedding planning guide, it opens up in a digital magazine format. So the pages actually look like they're turning. They can zoom in on different parts of it. They can you know, read it just like a book. So, so what this does is it breaks down wrong beliefs, right? So especially with... Uh, Weddings, like, they don't have any idea what they're doing. They've probably not um, gotten married before for the most part, and so they don't know any of the things that you know about how a wedding day can run smoothly, right? So that's one thing that you can automatically give them. In ours here, we have, like, the prep, family portraits, transportation, skipping the receiving line, and trust your vendors, right? Because those are the, the things that we always run into issues with at the prep, not having a window, right? Family portraits, like... Listen, we have a list, okay? We're going down our list, and Auntie Lou is gonna get a picture if she's on the list, and if not, she's not getting a picture because we have a time frame here that we're sticking to, right? So you're kind of squashing all the expectations that could even go wrong on a wedding day where they may think that something was your fault, but because of all the upfront education that they're getting, uh, they're never gonna blame you because they, they know what, what was supposed to happen, right? You're the trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. Um, so it rebuilds the right mindset. It addresses a current pain point. So if they're stressed out planning their wedding, you can help them with that. Um, family portraits, it's like, hey, here's how to make it so that when your family arrives, your kid doesn't freaking fall and ruin his pants immediately before we even start the session, right? Like there's, there's always a way to find that problem and solution within anything, okay? And then you take that problem and solution and you make a headline from it. So have you ever seen tabloid headlines? Right, and it's always like, this one thing made this guy $10,000 in a week. They don't tell you what the one thing is so that you click, right? This one thing, so you're like, well, what's the one thing? Click, oh, that's actually not interesting, right? That's how tabloids always work. It's always like this crazy big claim, and then you click on it because it's clickbait. That's what you wanna stay away from because people are already a understanding of what clickbait is nowadays. What you do wanna do is, use what we call the how to do X without X, right? So think of it this way, how to lose 10 pounds without giving up bread or cheese, right? If you saw that, you'd be like, well, if that's really possible, I want that, right? Because everyone knows that diets pretty much for the most part, you can't eat bread or cheese and most people love bread and cheese, right? So it makes sense. So in the same sense, you can use that for your weddings. Um, and it's like what we put on the screen, like are you overwhelmed with your wedding planning, right? So like how to plan a stress-free wedding without ruining your relationship with Auntie Lou, right? If I saw that, I'd be like, oh, that's, that's interesting, right? It's different than how to have a stress-free wedding. It's, it's just those extra couple words in the way that you, you formulate them that get people to actually like be interested in it, right? And so that's what we're doing with all this stuff. All right, so here is the bigger picture, okay? So on the left-hand side, we've got our social networking platforms, and then we've got our website and our blog, right? So people will typically these days find us on the social networking platforms first. They will not find us on our website first. Once they find us on those platforms, we need to get them to our blog or website where we provide them with great value and information like we've been going over. And then from there, we're gonna ask them to give us the, the, their information, their name, their email, something like that. 
and then we're going to email them a series of emails and then we're going to give more value in those emails. So we're going to send them back to our website, send them back to our blog, send them back to a full gallery, um, give them our pricing, and then we end up booking the client. So we call it the circle of life because it started there, right? Like they started, they're searching for us on social network and coming to our blog and then they opt in and then we send them back to our website, back to our blog, right? Because we're just getting them in, entrenched in our entire ecosystem. So that's why we call it the circle of life. The more times that they see us, and the more that they gain value from us, the more they trust us, and then we end up booking them as a client. And not only do we book them, that we, but we book them for exactly the price that we want, right? And each time they're going back, though, you're not giving them the same thing, you're giving them something new. Right, new information. Here's a new blog post, here's another thing, here's another client testimonial, here's this person, you know? All these, all these things to keep on helping the process. So these are some of the other lead magnets that are on our website. Top 20 questions you should ask uh, when booking your DJ. So we even inform people on other vendors, right? Because why? Because I don't want to work with a shitty videographer or a shitty DJ, right? I want the entire experience to be great. I want to know that when I get to the reception, that when I'm eating my meal, he's not going to freaking start the first dances, right? <laughs> like, why do they do that every time? I just don't understand. Like, it seems like they, they didn't get the memo or something, right? So, about you when they did it and you're not there. Right, you know, it's just like, what is happening here? <laughs> so let me break away from this really quick and I'm gonna show you my website and um, show you something cool about it, so. All right, so this is our uh, free resources page for our couples, okay? So we got this big slider with like booking your wedding DJ, top 20 questions you should ask. And these are the ones that you just saw on that other screenshot, right? Now check this out. The wedding invitation blog post, I, went, I left my studio, I got up from my desk, I stopped expecting people to just contact me, and I went down the street to a wedding invitation shop, a stationary shop, and I said, hey, um, didn't know if you'd be interested in maybe uh, writing a little bit on my blog about what a bride should, you know, top three questions or top three tips that she should know about her wedding invitations when she's going to get them. And in return, I'll photograph some of your wedding invitations for you, right? So I did that. I photographed some of her wedding invitations and she wrote a blog for me. And then we have backlinks on the, on the blog, right? So this is just general SEO stuff that, that we're talking about now, right? But then I can use that in an ad because it's helpful. It's informational, right? But I didn't write the blog. I didn't have to do any work except for shoot the photos for that person. And now I have an unending relationship where they'll be willing to do anything for me. And sometimes they'll even come in on a promo that I'm doing where I'm, maybe I'm giving away a free engagement session. And they'll also throw in free stationery. And then when I scroll down here, this is a wedding dress shop that's across the street from our studio. I walked right in and I did the same thing. Photographed some of their dresses. Um, for them and they wrote what, uh, you know, the top three tips on how to prepare for wedding dress shopping, right? This is valuable stuff because now I'm not even having to do all the content creation, which is time consuming. They're doing it for me. This one's from a florist and these are all from our preferred vendors, right? So I'm not going to just recommend anyone. I'm not just going to ask any vendor. I want people that also charge in the same price range as me um, so that we can have an A team come together to, to, to work a wedding, right? And then down here, this is our free wedding planning guide. This is my favorite picture. Um, this picture works amazing for ads. Why? Because you can't, you can't scroll past it. it. It does what's called a pattern interrupt, right? You're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and you see a, a grandma with bride mom making that face. And guess what you're doing for a second? You're gonna sit there and be like, <laughs> look at that, right? And then if it was interesting to you, because you're engaged, you're probably gonna click because of the picture. And you're like, oh, this is fun, right? There's a light atmosphere kind of thing to it. But if that said 20% off wedding photography, it would still deter people, right? Because it's the first interaction, it's the first thing they're seeing from us, okay? So you're pushing them to book already rather than giving them information. Right. All right, now let's go back to um, my homepage here because I want to show you guys something that this could be really beneficial for you. So this video here is a choose your own adventure. Okay, there are buttons that pop up inside the video so that people can explore our website right from in this one video. They don't have to go anywhere else. 
They're going to get the experience of working with us. They're going to get our pricing. They're going to get a, a wedding, um, a full wedding gallery, and an opportunity to win our Giphy photo booth at their um, wedding for free. Okay, so I'm going to play the first 30 seconds of it and then show you what happens. Hey, you guys. I'm Laura. This is Easton, and we are Lou Ray. It's so loud. You got it. Photography. We are so excited that you're at our website today. We have so much to show you. Yes, absolutely. In this video, you'll have an opportunity to see us walk you through our pricing menu so you can clearly understand it. You'll be able to see a full wedding gallery so that you know exactly what to expect on your wedding day, and you'll be able to schedule a consult with us to come into our studio and meet us face to face. All right. So, Is this studio? It's yeah, that's just a, back, a fake backdrop. Um, so that little short clip, right, just kind of tells them what they can expect. And then look, if they want to see our pricing, they click here. If they want to um, schedule a consult, if they want to view a full wedding gallery, or they can register to win our Giphy booth, right? So if they click this one. Hey guys, I'm so excited that you want to check out our pricing. I just want to make it really easy for you by walking you through exactly what we offer. So. Okay, so. It's right there in their face, right? It's not like they contact you and then like, can you tell me your pricing? And then you're like, okay, here it is. And then they're like, ghosted, waste of time. right? Total waste of time. This right in their face. It's right there. It's all broken down. Anything they need to know. Every question has been taken into account that we've been getting for the past 10 years and we put it in the video. So there it is right there, right? Now I use a program to create this called Interactor. And a lot of my video buddies um, that were doing weddings have since stopped doing weddings and they started doing promo videos that are choose your own adventure videos, okay? Because no one else is doing this. There is literally maybe five people that I actually know about that are doing this. And it is so uh, impactful for your marketing to be able to have a video that they can literally just keep choosing their own adventure going through, right? Because it's interactive the entire time. They're not just scrolling through your website and reading all this information. It's on-demand information that they're requesting right there and getting it immediately without even having to interact with you, but yet they get that sense of knowing you because they get a little bit of your personality, they see you interacting with them, right? And so it's huge. Now, this program um, has a monthly subscription, but normally they run um, promos where you get a certain uh, percentage off and it's a set price, right? So it's like for $300, you get lifetime access to the software. And then you can literally go in to like small businesses, and this is what I was telling you earlier, like pizza shops and stuff, and be able to be like making certain clips. And then you end up putting those clips together to like, okay, do you want to see what it's like to see your calzone cooking, right? <laughs> and then you like do a, a, a slow-mo um, or time-lapse of like the calzone like rising in the oven, right? And then it's like, oh my God, it looks delicious, right? Or maybe you want your cheesesteak. Well, then there's like somebody flipping the cheesesteak, right? Or whatever it may be doctor's offices, chiropractors, um, you name it, they all need marketing. And this is something that has never been seen before. Um, so I highly recommend this. I'm not affiliated with the company in any way. Um, I just know that just from doing the one video and putting it on my website, that video, people basically don't explore the rest of my website. They just contact me right away, you know, because they have all the information that they wanted. Um, so I just wanted to show you that because I, think, I, th I feel like it's super, super valuable. So you're saying that if we're a videographer, if we don't have no promo video on our website, we should all be shot. <coughs> Absolutely, yeah. What was the link? For the software? Yeah. Interactor. Interactor. So it's interact with the R and then dot I-O. Or if you're a member, you can get a copy of this video and you can watch it and see it. All right, sounds good. I'll go with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so the rest of... So that's at the top of our website, right? And as you scroll down here, it's an about us section, but it's SEO'd very specifically, okay? So we mention all the towns that are, that are around us, like New Gibbsboro and Cherry Hill and all that stuff. And then when you come down here, we have our wedding resources right there so that people can get into it. Um, then we've got all the recent uh, blog posts. And then we have individual galleries for every section of the wedding day because that helps with SEO substantially. Um, so this is not where you send them when you're targeting no. them? No. So that's what we're going to do now. 
Okay. Five more minutes and we're done, okay guys? No worries. We got till 11 till we get kicked out. Okay. So this is a landing page, okay? So notice that there are, there's nothing at the top, right? The first thing that they see is the headline and what, what I want them to, to, to do. So receive a free engagement session when you book before December 15th, right? Now, they can click that button or they can leave. That's it, right? The page scrolls further than this, so the uh, underneath of this would be like a little portfolio, maybe like 10 pictures to show them of the work. But what this does is it keeps them hyper-focused. Hyper it increases the conversions because they're not gonna get distracted from all the other stuff that's around. Uh, it helps them to create clear goals, support your ad, and generates brand trust. The engagement session that you're throwing it in, that's what, an hour, two hours, or you're like standard? We do 45 minutes for those. But we have phone calls with them first, right? With all the applicants. And when we decide who deserves to win that, um, but while we're on the phone with them, we go, hey, um, I don't know if you saw this, but if you wanted to get our Giphy photo booth at your wedding for free, um, if you book us by the 15th, then, you know, they're like, oh, really? And then we end up booking them right there before they even win or even find out the winner, right? So it's pretty cool. Some other landing pages. The wedding planning guide one is the half landing page, and then over here is one for boudoir, um, just to give you some examples. These are ones for the engagement session, and this is for um, luxury lifestyle family photo sessions that we offer. Um, so I wanted to point out copy too to you really quickly. So <clears throat> this says time, the one thing you will never get back, right? So when it comes to family stuff, that's literally the pain point, right? But they don't know it. Though some people will go through their whole lives without ever having a family session done because they don't care, right? And it's not until they're 70 years old and going, oh my God, I don't have any pictures of my family, that they're going to realize it. So we have to make them problem aware. So time, the one thing you never get back, right? Then from there, it's uh, sometimes life can take over and we forget to live in between the special moments. We capture those moments, the, one that matter, the ones that matter most. And so this next line says, the way Sophia giggles when daddy reads her her favorite story, they always laugh at the same part of the story when daddy makes that funny voice. Okay, any of you have kids in here? When I said, when daddy makes that funny voice, did you instantly go in your head to something that related to you and your kid in that capacity? Right, right. So what I just did by saying that, if I said, the way Sophia giggles when daddy reads her her favorite story and stop there, it wouldn't be the same. If I, but when I add that second sentence in there, um, they always laugh at the same part of the story when daddy makes that funny voice. It triggers that thing in your brain. What just happened was you stopped thinking logically about what you were reading about and you started feeling emotionally about it, okay? And one of the biggest sales tactics that you can use is to get people to buy from a place of emotional need instead of a logistical need, okay? They're always gonna spend more, they're gonna value the relationship, all that. The second line says, the way Skylar's face lights up when he gets to work with dad on the tree fort. Who does he run to first to show off his masterpiece? Mom, right? He's outside, makes a tree fort, He's so excited, it's all done. Who's he gonna run into? Mom, mom, you gotta come see the fort, right? So everybody that has kids can relate to that. That's what you need to do with your copy, whether, no matter what you're um, going for, if it's weddings or if it's families or if it's boudoir or if it's corporate work, you have to relate to the client. You have to realize where they're at in their emotional headspace and meet them there with copy. Copy is the number one thing that sells your ads. It's the number one thing that sells your business. Um, and companies pay copywriters $30,000 and, and above to write four emails because those four emails are going to make them over a million dollars and that copywriter is not just gonna charge you 50 up front, 50,000 up front, they're also gonna take up to 10% of your revenue from it. And that we're talking about all the major companies, Fortune 500 and above, all those companies, they all have paid copywriters that take a percentage of the revenue. So if they can actually take a percentage of revenue just for writing a couple emails, you better believe it's one of the most important things about marketing, okay? All right, I think we're gonna wrap up there. Um, I have millions of things we could go into. Um, but if you guys want to learn more, there's a couple things that you can do. I have a free Facebook group that I um, am very active in. I do a lot of free trainings in. Um, we just did one the other day um, about copywriting, actually. 
and it's called uh, The Art of Six Figures, Learn the Business of Photography. So if you search for that on, on uh, Facebook, there's like 3,500 other people in there. This is one video I did live with a copywriter. Um, we do all kinds of stuff in here um, all the time. It's called The Art of Six Figures. Basically, you can find me on all platforms by searching for The Art of Six Figures. This is my free group called Learn the Business of Photography. So if you can find it now, you can request to join and I'll approve you. Um, and then our, our uh, website is theartofsixfigures.com. There's lots of free information on here, like you can download the top seven mistakes that most photographers make when using Facebook ads. It's a PDF, just like I was teaching you how to do. Um, I also have a free Facebook ads mini course called the uh, Seven Day Facebook Ads Challenge. And that'll get you really into, uh, it's free and, and it'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process with which I teach in my course. It just doesn't give you all the information. Uh, it's a good place to kind of figure out, are Facebook ads gonna work for me? Is this something that I'm willing to do? That's probably a good place to start. Um, and let's see, we're on Instagram with the Art of Six Figures, Facebook with the Art of Six Figures. Um, yeah, and you can always email me, send me a Facebook request. I don't think I have room for friends though. You're too full. <clears throat> and how much does the course cost if somebody wanted to buy it? Uh, the course is uh, 397 and you can do a payment plan. Uh, you can put $150 down and then every two weeks it bills you another 150 for three total payments. Um, so it ends up being 450 if you do the payment plan, 397 if you buy it outright. And you can find that on our website here. Um, if you scroll down, most popular courses, it's the Ultimate Facebook Ads Marketing Reboot right here. And what do you get for that? <clears throat> so this is everything that you get. Um, we do live Q&As every Monday. So uh, if you get stuck on your ads, um, I actually can take over your screen and help you fix them. Online, the whole course is online, yep. There's a private Facebook group with all of the successful ads that all of my members have run so you can actually see what they've done and copy it. Um, there's one rule when you buy my course, you're not allowed to launch your first ad until I've seen the ad and have looked it over and uh, given you feedback on it. That ensures that uh, it's gonna be a lot more uh, successful than if you just did it on your own. You get four free months of sticky folios and email. So if you have no idea how to create a landing page or you have no idea what software to use for sending emails automated, uh, we give it to you for free for four months. You get an onboarding call as soon as you buy the course, 15 minutes, we look over your business. It's directly with me. Uh, 15 minutes, we go through your business and I tell you what to focus on in the course that'll get you the best results for you and your geographic location and your niche. Uh, we update the course four times a year as Facebook changes so all the um, information ends up always being relevant. And this is kind of the process. We, we take you through discovering your client avatar, becoming a thought leader, creating that ecosystem of content we talked about, email follow-up, creating landing pages and lead magnets, and then the, all the inner workings of Facebook ads and uh, how to create custom audiences, look-alike audiences, installing the pixel, um, all that stuff, building your first ad campaign and retargeting people. Um, there's also a video on this page that shows you the entire back end of where the course is so you can see exactly how all the inner workings happen. And there's tons of te uh, testimonials from our people that have made $10,000 or more from launching one ad, okay? One ad. Um, and this guy here, Chris, uh, and this is uh, Peter Mackey. They're both wedding photographers. Um, this guy is a multi six-figure photographer. Um, and this guy quit his job last year and went full-time with photography. Uh, it comes with a lot of written um, cheat sheets and, and whatnot that are associated with each lesson so that you can, if you're not, if you're someone that learns through video, then that's cool because that's what the whole course is in. But if you learn by reading a little bit more, some people are different. Um, a lot of the course has written uh, coursework as well so that you can kind of use the two to get a better idea of what's happening. <coughs> Uh, there's some case studies on here and there's an interview with Andy. He went from making $130,000 a year to $500,000 using our system. And then there's so many reviews. These are all reviews. I don't know if any of you know who Zach and Jody Gray are, um, but I coach them personally as well. Um, and uh, Benjamin Shaversky, who sells the Giphy booth, I worked with him one-on-one. -on -one. Megan Kuthin, who's a big coach in our industry, I coached her and she said that my Facebook ads course for $400 did more for her than the $2,500 courses she bought. She spent $40 and made 
eleven thousand dollars on from one ad. Um, but yeah, you can take some time read the uh, all the um, reviews on it and stuff. And I would say this: don't buy it if you don't plan on doing a lot of work. Um, if you're not the kind of per type of person that you know goes in to tax your business, this is probably not for you. Um, but if you do want to work hard and you're ready to, to work a lot, then this is definitely something for you and you can make a lot of money doing it. It changed my entire life when I figured this out. And um, you know, it gave me my, my time back with my kid and with my wife uh, because I was just constantly going and going and going and going and not really getting where I wanted to be. And once I figured out Facebook ads, um, I don't worry about anything anymore because I know that I can just launch an ad tomorrow if I don't have business and I'll, and I'll get it you know, in a week. So. That's it. You can go to the website to, uh, to find out about that course. There's a lot, some other courses on there as well. Um, and if you want to contact me to um, do like a free strategy session to see if we'd be good to work together one-on-one, -on -one, uh, those are free. So just send me a message on Facebook. Um, even if we can't be friends, it's fine. I, I still check my others folder because uh, it's, there's, I always get messages in there. So jump on a call with you, if, look over your business, and if it's right, then I'll let you know what the price is. If not, then Go our separate ways. If somebody buys this and they have uh, trouble, questions, struggling, are you there to help them answer yeah. questions? So you'll, you'll get invited to the group, the Facebook group that's specifically for my members. I'll show you that real quick. So right now there's uh, 1,132 members in here. And uh, in here, we constantly are updating new ideas, new strategies. Um, you're going to post all of your questions in here. As you go through every module throughout the course, there's homework that you need to do and post in this group so that I can look it over and make sure you're on the right track. I'm very hands-on um, with all of my students. Um, so this is the place where everyone comes and you know, says, hey, this isn't working, or that's not working, or hey, this just worked, I can't believe it, or you know, wait, how do I link my landing page to my thank you page? Like any, anything and any, any questions you have, it's all here. Um, then you've got like the different uh, PDFs, we put them all in here so that they're easier to find. And then the units tab here is what we were talking about. So every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we do a live Q&A with all the members and we record them and then we put them in here so you can go and uh, watch all the, the past live Q&As. Right, 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 where everyone else struggled, right. you can just go watch the video. And yep, and then all the client avatars from our clients. Um, and then any, every single niche is categorized with any successful ads people have made. So boudoir lead magnets, boudoir model call, right? All the way through families, fitness, e-sessions, um, weddings, headshots, seniors, uh, maternity, mini sessions, newborns, story-based ads, and then it goes into all the successful campaigns, Santa, Santa sessions, you know, frequently asked questions. <laughs> Just keeps going and going. Um, so $400 to, you know, basically change up your business and get a lot of my time. And one-time fee. One-time fee. Yep. One-time. One-time fee, live Q&A every Monday. Yep. I have a question. If you coach, for example, a business more like I'm buying off a year, No, they'll probably fail. <laughs> if you what? No, you said if I if I coach a business for a year, would they have success? Oh, I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. What's your, what's your estimate the amount of hours to put in to make it basic? How much to start the investment? How many hours is going to cost somebody? So the the amount of content is about four and a half hours, like it, just in video time, watch. right? Just to watch about four and a half hours of content. And then after you've watched that, uh, then you're going to need to implement it. And that all depends on how tech savvy you are. Uh, if you struggle with tech, then it may take you a lot longer, maybe a month, to get through everything and, and really understand and, and build the, everything. Uh, if you're good, though, we've had people that have gone through in a week and had ads up in, in a week. Well, obviously, if you team does, so I don't want to be involved too much, really, because I don't have the time. That's another problem, too. Right. It's so if you want. Just, it's not just like either desire or like. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't work with anybody one on one, where I completely do everything for them, uh, because I feel like it ends up shooting them in the foot. Because uh, I don't want to work with you forever. I I make my money by working with people for short periods of time, 
changing their business, implementing the system, and then moving on and teaching you how to run your ads, but now you have the entire infrastructure in place, right? But you still have to do the work. So six to eight weeks to work with me is $5,500. And then after that six to eight week period, we're doing, or well, during that period, we're having a call once a week, and then I'm giving you homework and teaching you what to do, then you're gonna do it, then you're gonna send me that homework, then I'm gonna make sure it's good, and then we're gonna implement it. And then after everything is said and done, your website and all your content and stuff will look like mine, where it has all the actual content on there that we need to be able to run ads with, and then I run the ads for you. But I don't just run ads for people unless they are implementing the front end of my marketing system as well, because the ads won't work. So I worked in the past from like, uh Mm -hmm. What happens if I don't have the content, then what do you do? Then you, I teach you how to create it, but you have to do it. You have to create it. I teach you what to do, what to write, why to write it, when to write it, but you got to write it. But you're saying about video or photographic content Correct. that you don't have, not uh, copyright content. Yeah, either way. You, any piece of content you're making. Um, and I do it that way because you have to be just as invested as me or else... Uh, I can do it for you, but then after I stop doing it, you'll just fall flat on your face again because you don't know how to do it. So if you don't have any beautiful brides, you do you recommend like having a, a model and you know, or just simulating the whole thing? Does that happen in the past? Like, you, like if you don't have a wedding to show? Correct. Yeah, so I would run an ad. We've had people that were just starting out as wedding photographers. They didn't have a single client. We ran a model call ad for them, and they were able to do a bunch of free engagement sessions and then from that, they booked a couple of those people as weddings, and so then they got themselves to be able to do uh, you know, a highlight reel from their own stuff. So that's how we end up generating people from zero to getting them going. That makes sense.